my girlfriends hated my lovemaking music for two years without telling me. I thought I'd found the perfect song to make love to. It had the perfect rhythm, and I learned to move in sync with the music. I was so confident that I'd managed to really up my game. Only, it turns out, my girlfriend has hated this song for the entire two years we've been making love to it. I'm worried this news might ruin the whole relationship. A little backstory. When I first started sleeping with women, I researched ways to be better, as I was a little stiff and pretty much had no idea what I was doing. I read online that you can play music and match the rhythm in order to put on a better performance. I searched lovemaking songs and started slowly creating a playlist of songs with which I was comfortable matching the rhythm. There are a few songs to my playlist, however there's one song in particular, which actually happens to be my favorite, that my girlfriend hates and says turns her off in a major way. I don't understand why it's taken her two years to tell me she hates that song. It's a good lovemaking song with a good rhythm. I feel the way I messed up is I could have possibly asked her previously if she likes the playlist or any songs she'd like to add or change. But to leave it for two years, thinking our bedroom life is great, but in her eyes has just been ruined by my music, has left the whole situation feeling awkward, and I'm a bit annoyed. I pretty much played this tune every single time. So the number of times she must have not been enjoying it, when I thought the complete opposite, is annoying, but also embarrassing in ways. Not to mention my previous partners. However, they never complained about the song, so maybe it's just her? It's messed up the relationship, to be honest, because sleeping together feels awkward now. The other day we were doing it with no music, but I was still thrusting to the tune playing in my head. She recognized this and asked me to stop. I thought this song was perfect, and I always thrust along with the tune and feel it gives me the perfect rhythm for doing the deed. I usually bust to this song and find it devastating she hates it. There's probably no way I can play this for you, but the song is called Sea Bat by Hudson Mohawk. It was on an episode of Workaholics, and the top comment has pretty accurately compared it to robot dolphin noises. Most people are agreed that this guy should be lucky to still have a girlfriend, let alone one who sleeps with him. And if he was moving in time to the rhythm of this particular song, then he was not moving very well. There's a reason his former partners never complained, and it's because they chose the easier solution by simply becoming his former partners. This story really took over the internet for a minute. It quickly became one of the most requested stories to be read by the podcast Two Hot Takes, and even Hudson Mohawk is laughing about the story on Twitter. Look up his song, and every recent comment relates to this story. If I were a musician, I'm not sure how I'd feel about my song being used to universally trash a man's bedroom skills. They say there's no such thing as bad publicity, but this is one heck of a way to test that principle. The LP also posted a TikTok of himself thrusting to the song, as well as an update letting us know that his girlfriend found the post and ended their relationship. Because she can deal with his awful lovemaking for two years, but can't go two days with other people knowing about it. Just wild. It took me 15 years to realize that my dog couldn't talk. This story ended yesterday but it started around 15 years ago. My parents had a dog, Blinky, the cutest English Cocker Spaniel, from before I was born. So she was always there while I was growing up. We lived pretty remote from everything, and my older sister and I didn't get along at all. So for the first five or six years of my life, I considered Blinky to be my best friend in the world. I don't remember many very specific events with her, but I do remember her always being around and by my side. Always, as in she would even come along when I went to bed or the bathroom. We were perfectly happy, until one day my dad pulled a prank on me, and this day I remember very, very vividly. I heard my dad say something to Blinky while he was working in the garden, and I wanted to make fun of him for talking to an animal. But when I tried to, he looked me dead serious in the eyes and told me that of course he talked to Blinky. Why wouldn't he? Blinky talked to him as well. At first, I thought he was joking but he was so serious about it, and I was young and stupid. So when he kept at it, I started believing him. When I asked, still warily, why Blinky didn't talk to me, he said she was very shy and didn't dare talk to many people. I think he carried on in the garden after that, but I was left dumbstruck. I went on a walk with Blinky and started talking to her, asking her and eventually begging her to talk to me. I told her that she didn't have to be shy, that I would never make fun of her, that she could trust me. Of course, Blinky remained silent, and I was hurt. 
I know it may sound petty, but I was, I don't think I can ever get over this, and things will probably never be the same hurt, because my dearest friend in the world wouldn't trust me, while she could trust my dad, with whom she wasn't nearly as close. So I remember going home and bawling my eyes out all night. And indeed, things didn't get back to the way they were after that. Blinky had shown her true colors, and I could never fully forgive her or go back to being the closest of buddies like we were before. I didn't hate her or anything, and would still occasionally play with her, but the close friendship was over. Some years later, when I was about 11 or 12, Blinky passed away, something with her kidneys. She was pretty old by that point. I was pretty sad at the time, because even though we hadn't been that close anymore, she was still our dog. At that time, I didn't actively think about the talking thing that had caused the initial rift, which resulted in my world not falling apart when she passed. Fast forward another small decade. I'm 20 years old now, and I went home to see my parents last night, and my older sister is also there. There aren't a lot of times all of us are together anymore, so when that happens, we tend to get a bit nostalgic and talk about memories from when we were younger. Today, for the first time in years, we were talking about Blinky, and the three of them were talking about how great and funny and loyal she was, and I mainly listened. Until at one point, I said without thinking, I didn't like her all that much, she wouldn't talk to me. After which, my parents and my sister fell silent. That confused me, bringing my full attention to what I had just said. And at that point, it all came together in my head, causing the biggest mind flip I ever had. Only then did I understand my dad's joke and the absurdity of its consequences. Of course, if I had actively thought about it, I would have figured it out way sooner. But the blinky could talk thing had just been in the back of my head all this time since I was young enough to believe it, as a passive piece of truth which had never been questioned or reviewed again until now. So I explained all this, and my family has been continuously making fun of me since. The best part of this story is just everyone in the comments trying to deconstruct the mind of a child to understand how OP believed this lie for so long. It's actually not that hard to understand. Sometimes when you learn the facts you need to debunk a lie, that lie doesn't actually enter into your mind. So like OP says, it just carries on in the back of your mind as a truth that you never think to question. When it finally comes back to the surface, you realize immediately how dumb it is. That may not be the best explanation. In truth, it's hard to explain to anyone who hasn't been through it. But believe a dumb lie for long enough, and you'll understand what I mean. In fact, feel free to share your own stories about dumb lies you believed as children in the comments below. I'm sure it'd be nice for people like this OP to know they aren't alone. If you made it this far in the video, consider liking and subscribing for more videos coming. My youngest son almost got charged for smuggling powder onto an airplane. This happened about three weeks ago, but the story starts a little further back in time. I have two kids, a now 16-year-old son and a 13-year-old son. About a year ago, when we were all in COVID-19 lockdown, my eldest son was contacted by his teacher to check up on him and his well-being with a text along the lines of, Hey, everything okay? Great guy. Students love him. My eldest, being a bit of a joker, replied, Everything's fine. Heist was a success. Money is hidden, or something along those lines. The teacher, appreciating the joke, played along for a while, going as far as sending my son and some friends on scavenger hunts with distorted voice messages and all. They had their little pretend gangster empire for a little while, which was a welcome and merry change of affairs, having been in umpteen lockdowns and boring online classes. And this eventually led to my son making a few bricks of powder from flour and wrapped in cling film and duct tape, which he then delivered to teacher's doorsteps. All jokes, albeit a little on the edge, but it was all harmless and in good spirit. Anyway, eventually the empire faded and everything went back to normal. Fast forward a year or so, my youngest, not being involved in any of the above, went to swim at a friend's, who had a pool in his backyard. His friend jokingly told my youngest he could only come over if he paid the entrance fee of some insane amount. Youngest then remembered the eldest may still have a brick of powder lying around, which he did. So he took the brick, went to his friends, paid the entrance fee, and they played and swam with his friend that afternoon. When he went home, he put the brick back in his backpack. Fast forward another week to holiday time. We were ready for our long overdue vacation and booked a vacation to Mallorca. We pack our bags, drive two hours to get to the airport, and check in our suitcases. We stroll around a little while at the airport, eat something, 
and then head towards customs. We're each carrying a backpack as hand luggage. Our backpacks go through the x-ray machine. We all go through the scanning thingy. And as I'm gathering my keys, phone, and wallet from the conveyor belt, I notice an officer gesturing at my youngest to come over, holding up his backpack. Okay, by now it is painstakingly clear where this is going. What else would the backstory serve for, right? So my youngest is instructed to open his backpack, and he complies. The officer reaches in his backpack and begins unpacking. A book, a sweater, an iPad, all the regular stuff. I think nothing of it and assume it's just a random check. Stuff keeps coming out of his backpack until the officer reaches in, his arm all the way deep into the backpack, and in slow motion, out he pulls this brick of white powder and a little plastic bag of grass, which was an actual weed from our backyard, not the kind that gets you high, cut up in small pieces to make it look like the smoking kind. I still don't know where that came from, if it was also made by the eldest, or maybe the youngest decided to one-up his older brother. Not sure. Anyway, it took me a while to register what I was witnessing, and it took me another few seconds to put together the pieces on what had happened. I didn't know the entire story at that time, but I did gather that the brick in the officer's hand must be one of the bricks of powder from last year's adventures of our eldest. Our passports were taken into custody. We were set apart, and four policemen, two of them with automatic rifles, appeared looking very much not amused. Which is quite a shock for Dutch people. We're not used to that. Mind you, we were at a German airport in Cologne, and let's be honest here, you can say a lot about Germans, but one thing they aren't known for is their excellent sense of humor. A little later, another two officers appeared with suitcases containing test kits, swabs, blue liquids, the whole shebang. Meanwhile, I was trying to explain to the officers what had happened in my broken German, telling them it was a prank on his friend. Of course, every other smuggler would say that. While images of rubber gloves and barking police dogs flashed before my eyes, my heart sank deeper and deeper, as did my wife's and our kids. I don't know how long it took in total, but it felt like forever. Eventually, I guess about an hour or so later, when all tests had confirmed that the powder was indeed not illegal and that the grass was indeed not illegal, the two guys left with their tests and suitcases. We got a long lecture from one of the officers, deservedly so, that those kinds of pranks weren't funny, and that we were lucky they didn't charge us for the time lost by all these people and tests. The powder was handed back to the youngest, who was then instructed to trash it. Luckily, we were at the airport very early, and so we still made our flight. We were even more lucky that this happened in Cologne, Germany, and not some faraway country where you get jailed for years for carrying a single joint. We were lucky our youngest is a minor, we were lucky we weren't charged with anything, and lucky we weren't charged for the tests. We were lucky we still made our flight, and our youngest is lucky we are still allowing him to live under our roof. Some of the commenters came down really hard on this OP, as well as the kid's teacher. The joke that started this all off may not have been in the best taste, but it really didn't cross a line until the props were made. That's the point at which they were pretty much asking for their actions to be misunderstood. But even then, it sounds like the whole thing fizzled out not long after that. More than anything, OP learned to always check their luggage himself. A thorough bag check would have prevented this entire misunderstanding from occurring. You have to be really careful with customs in pretty much any country. Just like the fact they don't want you joking about having a bomb, they don't take contraband as a joke. Their job is to keep flights safe, not to have a sense of humor, so they can't assume that a dealer would be above using his own son as a mule. I'm not sure if they actually would have charged OP the way they threatened to. I think they just wanted the ordeal to leave a lasting impression. Hopefully it worked. My brother showed pictures of my stiff wang to everyone at my talent show. Yesterday I performed in my school's talent show. My act was singing and playing my guitar. I'm not a really good singer, which is why I was hoping my slightly above average guitar skills would disguise my below average vocal skills. I also planned to have photos of my family and friends appearing on a projector screen behind me because my song was dedicated to the loved ones in my life. I put my younger brother in charge of connecting my laptop to the projector and playing the slideshow when it was my turn to perform on stage. My brother and I practiced multiple times, and I felt confident he would not mess it up. As soon as I started singing and playing my guitar, the audience started giggling. At first I thought my singing must be really freaking awful but then I realized the crowd was reacting to the images on the projector. It was a collection of photos my brother took of me after my dentist appointment. 
My mouth was swollen, and I was clearly on another effing planet, because I was grinning like an idiot, with blood on my teeth in almost every photo. I was dying inside when I saw the photos. But I didn't stop singing. The show must go on, right? The crowd erupted with laughter when photos appeared of me sleeping upside down on the bed with my swollen mouth and a noticeable bone due to me passing out on top of my blankets instead of under them. I also happened to be wearing Spongebob boxers, and my bone was positioned in such a way that it made Spongebob's nose look like Pinocchio's nose. I had seen enough. Forget the show must go on. I made it sound like my song was over, although it was not, and bowed out. I found my brother laughing his heart out backstage. I wanted to beat him over the head with my guitar, Negan style, but his laughter was so contagious, I ended up laughing too. I'm considering not going to school next week, or maybe ever again. Go to school. It'll be fine. Things like this will ruin you a lot more if you react like it's the end of the world. If you can laugh with everyone else, you'll come out better than you were before. Kids really aren't as awful or unforgiving as a lot of people think. They'll laugh at a prank, but that doesn't necessarily mean they think less of the person the prank is happening to. Do you agree, or do you think OP's life is ruined forever? Feel free to share your thoughts or similar stories in the comments below. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.